Trini Girl Natural. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I had to come and I said I wasn't going to come on main objective, did a great job. So I felt like it was said already. But every single day things just kept getting worse, she just kept getting worse and worse. I'm on social media a lot and I know not everybody's on social media a lot so maybe I might be seeing things that you may not be seeing. So the first time I started having questions about Shea Moisture was last year when they suddenly found a bag out of nowhere after that Brussels tragedy. When there had been terrorist attack after terrorist attack in Nigeria by Boko Haram with more deaths, more injuries, more kids dying, like everything and they couldn't find a Nigerian flag and I was like is this a black owned company? Am I missing something? That was the first time I was like, what's really going on with them? But then they came on and said, yes, we care about black people. They didn't even apologize, they didn't even say we are sorry for the Nigerian victims that I know of. They just came on and said, hey, we love black people. <laughs> we have black friends, basically. They came on and said, we love black people. We love everybody from all different countries. And that was it. Nobody took a stand back then, otherwise they'd have probably suddenly been sorry. So that was number one. But I gave them the benefit of the doubt, even though I had a side eye, and even though that side eye kind of stuck with me. Now fast forward to Monday, and there's this hair hate ad. No warning, no context, we just see this Shea Moisture ad and click play, and then shock of our lives, basically. Hair hate is something that has kind of been central to the natural hair community about learning to love your hair and you know, starting off with all these insecurities and feelings. So it's a sensitive topic and it's a central topic for the natural hair community. Whereas among white women, among white hair companies, I've never seen any company talk about hair hate. I've never seen Pantene talk about hair hate, never seen L'Oreal talk about hair hate. All their commercials are like happy women dancing and singing and twirling and shampooing. That's, that's all the white commercials I've ever seen. So somehow Black Rich Lou figured out, pioneered the movement for white hair hate or figuring out that white women hate their hair and decided that black women really needed to know about this because black women are the central core market for Shea Moisture. So they co-opted our insecurities and our feelings of hate for our hair and decided to just throw that at white women to see if it stopped, to see if they got some sales using our pain. They decided to create this hair hate issue for white women just so that they could have some kind of all hair hate matters movement, make it up, just like all, all life matters was made up because black people disproportionately experience trivialization of our lives. They decided, hey, let's do the same thing with hair because that's a great idea when there are not many black people in the room. Just so that they could lump us together and market us together and make up this fantastical white woman, black woman, sisterhood over hair hate. I don't for one minute believe that there were so many redheads hating their hair and so many blondes. I mean the blonde they couldn't even come up with hair hate. Even the redhead they couldn't come up with hair hate. Like that's just to show you how stolen the concept was. If there were droves of white women talk, telling Shea Moisture how much they hated their red hair and their blonde hair, they could come up with better ads than I didn't know what to do with my hair, I didn't feel like a redhead. The first one, she was like a racial dollar for, for blonde hair. She didn't feel like she was a redhead. That's the best hair hate that they could come up with. And then the blonde one, who was the epitome of hair beauty, couldn't come up with anything at all. So she was just like, Let's all love our hair at the end, all chippers. We were waiting for it to make sense. We saw, okay, the black or Latino or the brown woman at first come on and talk about people throwing stuff in her hair, teasing her. I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's kind of middle school for you. That's what kids do. So maybe the next one's going to be hair hate, you know? I'm waiting to see the kinky haired woman or the kinky haired girl. I'm waiting to hear stories about being sent home from school, being told not to return to school, not being allowed in school, being fired. I wanted to hear stories about like real hair hate. And it just kept getting worse and worse in the sense of it just kept becoming less and less hateful. So we had one woman talk about being teased, one woman talk about not knowing what to do with her hair, and the last woman didn't even talk about hair at all. She was just like, yeah, let's love our hair. And this is what they decided to present to their core market of black women 
knowing our history with our hair, knowing our history about insecurities or feelings of hate towards our hair. To me, it was a complete mockery. And it was very insincere. Like, I highly doubt that there was so many straight red hair and blonde haired white women talking about hating their hair that she, well, she just had to do a commercial about it. They couldn't even come up with good hate, <laughs> you know? So it was totally contrived. They were used to being exposed to our feelings and they decided let's just try these feelings out on white women and see if anything sticks, co-opting. So many black girls, their first memory as a black girl in terms of beauty and in terms of hair is wanting hair like that redhead woman or that blonde woman in the video. Like I'm talking five, six years old, if you are lucky enough to even not have your hair straightened, your earliest formative memory about beauty is that bluest eye concept. A little six year old whose identity isn't even fully formed yet, but who knows that their hair is ugly? Who knows that their hair is nappy and bad and unkempt and you know, the adults around them say do something with it and hide it and permit. That's what we go through. That's hair hate. And then they're going to have this redhead woman say, well, I don't know what to do with it. And then this blonde haired woman say, let's all love our hair. And up to now, we haven't seen anybody who had that kinky hair struggle in the video. And then we're supposed to just hug these women. Never mind that our stories weren't told and we weren't represented. We are supposed to just feel sisterly connection. It was just too much. Most of the black women watching the ad experienced those similar feelings of confusion, maybe hurt, maybe anger. So social media began to blow up. Black Twitter began to blow up. On Facebook, everybody was sharing it. People were going to the Shea Moisture Facebook page and posting one star reviews with their feelings. Of course, the black woman haters found out about it and they were all over social media, all over Twitter, talking about angry black women and black women by ways but they mad at Shea Moisture and guess what Shea Moisture was doing that whole time thank you for the support high five like just thanking the people that were literally bashing their black customers again social media and we had to see that so you did wrong with the ad you did wrong with the response to the ad both positive and negative and then when they finally saw well wait a minute these these women are really mad because I think the first day they had like 4,000 one-star reviews with complaints. They decided to put out some flippant apology that was just basically, oops, my bad, we should have known better. But nothing like, this is what we're going to do to prevent this. This is how it happened. No, I didn't get any sincerity. I didn't feel any sorrow coming from them. It was just like, we have to apologize, so let's do it. Then on Roland Martin, he said, oh, nobody saw the clip. It just rolled out onto Facebook magically. Like, that's the other issue I have with him. He doesn't seem honest. Like, I don't believe him. I don't believe that nobody saw the clip. It just happened. Like, somebody closed their eyes and randomly snipped and closed their eyes and posted on Facebook and nobody knew anything. That's what Richard Liu was trying to get us to believe in that Roland Martin interview. And the black woman in the interview asked him if any black woman, you know, had any leadership decisions or any role in that ad and he couldn't, he hasn't, up to now he has not responded, he completely dodged it, which I know what that means because every time he had even a half chance to say something positive about himself, he was saying it. So if he couldn't say that there were any black women leading that ad, I know what that means. I was already upset by the ad. I was upset by them high-fiving misogynists and people who don't know anything about Shea Moisture on Twitter who were just doing it just to express anti-black sentiment. Then we find out that a lot of the key positions in marketing and social media are held by white women. The VP of brand strategy is a white woman. The innovating marketing manager is a white woman. We find out that the social media manager is a white woman. We found out that the associate communications PR manager is a white woman. And there wasn't a black woman VP or director in that social media PR marketing area that we found, that we know of. So obviously people are concerned now. This is a black owned company and now we're concerned about representation. Are black women represented in the leadership? Especially in terms of, well in terms of everywhere, but in this case in terms of marketing and PR, social media, because we are trying to find out what happened because they're not saying anything. I'm not against having white women employees. All we are saying is that we want to be represented 
and that obviously if your core market is black women, being represented is also in your best interest as per this whole fiasco. So we see all these white women photos from LinkedIn and people are sharing it around and we're like, wow, okay. So that already we know that a lot of Shea Moisture is owned by Baines. I don't even want to call them black owned. They're partially black owned. Now it seems like there are, we don't even know how many black people work there. Next day we find out the main objective that the woman, the white woman, took their pictures down. So that is their solution to improving diversity, is just to hide them, hide their race. So that's going to improve diversity at Shea Moisture, which shouldn't even be a question in the first place. So I thought that that was very dishonest. And it was again like they just didn't care about us. They didn't care enough to address our concerns. They just want to keep their paycheck and keep their bottom line and that is the most important thing for them. Then I go on Facebook and I see that anybody who asks for more black women representation as employees and leaders in Shea Moisture were being told that they were attacking and slandering white women. They were copying and pasting the same intimidating message, basically emotionally assaulting their own black customers and making requests for diversity into attacks on them. And their so the so-called imaginary attacks on them were more important than the fact that their whole company is pretty much going to hell right now and the fact that they initially upset black women by co-opting their struggle. When they doubled down, that was my last and final straw. Like every day I was saying I'm done, but every day it just kept getting worse. I'm sure tomorrow you're gonna do something even worse again. But the fact that you could tell me that you can't even find a black woman to come up and say, well, hey, I'm the leader of something around PR and marketing and social media. Because I'm sure he would have paraded her by now. The only face he can parade so far is his own. So you can't even find one. And then you're hiding the white woman, <laughs> defending the white woman, allowing the white woman to abuse black women. Why should any of us pay for that? Why should any of us endorse that? On Facebook, on their own page, they are allowing racist, misogynist, call black women anything but the child of God. So their Facebook page is not a safe space for us, but a safe space for people to attack us. It's free fall on attacking black women on the Shea Moisture Facebook page. Seriously, that's a black owned business. That's something that I want to pay money to be a part of. And on top of not doing anything about the people that were attacking us, they are saying, claiming that us asking for diversity is attacking them and they're not here for it and they're not going to stand for it and that non-issue, that fake issue is more important than all the other mess that they have done and all the other hurt that they have caused to black women this whole week. They not only ignore us and not address us and not respond to us about that, they decide to in intimidate us and insinuate that we're attacking and slandering them, using their privilege and power to further abuse black women and that's what we're supposed to support and that's what we're supposed to spend money on. They're exposing us to the same abuse that we get throughout our lives from racist and from insensitive people on their page and it's a free for all there and they don't even care and they're more concerned with people asking about diversity. That's where they draw the line, that's where they put their foot down. And then he comes on Roland Martin and basically says that we don't know about business, comes on all condescending. Our loyalty is his pretty much, our money is his and we need to let him do what he wants with it. Like they are just going from bad to worse. They just every decision that they made was bad, worse, 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 worse. I, I don't even I'm scared to think of what they're gonna come up with tomorrow. The entire fiasco day after day by Shea Moisture has proven to me that this is not a company that I want anything to do with. I want to associate myself with positive brands. I want to support positive brands. I want to support brands who care about me as a black woman. So I know they keep saying how oh they invest, oh they donate. They, they give scholarships and stuff like that, but that doesn't mean you care. You might think it's a good business move, but caring and not caring is something that we can see from your works, and your works don't say anything about caring, like in terms of how you treat your customers right now, it doesn't say caring. How you ignore the terror attacks in Nigeria and suddenly have feelings for Brussels does not say caring about black people. I should say, because you're prepared to care plenty about white women, but I'm talking about caring about black women. I don't want to be around a company that doesn't care. I'm not going to sit here and let you let white women tell me how I'm supposed to feel about my hair. Because knowing the psychological impact of words and images and so on and how we are struggling to get that self-love back, 
Why would we trust white women to help us on that journey and not push us backward? Why would we put our reprogramming into the hands of white women who are straight out attacking us on social media right now? Like it does not make any sense at all. The white women in charge seem to be just as privileged and just as racially insensitive as the white women that are like tearing up the Facebook page now, calling us everything but the child of God. In fact, some of the attacks are coming from the shame moisture name in terms of calling people who are just asking for diversity attackers and slanderers and so on. So there's just no way, no way. We don't need that. I mean, definitely not going to pay for that. And we don't want that. Like even for free, we should be protesting and demanding respect and demanding to be treated as we deserve. So I'm done with shame moisture. It's cancelled. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you feel. And let me know if shame moisture is cancelled for you.